welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's video, we'd like to talk about Augustus Hegem, focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of the lyrics and the music video to see what they can tell us about the concept and story of this official solo debut. Hegem is a song written and composed by Jung himself, and its title is a wordplay that actually refers to two different things. On one hand, the Hegem is a traditional string instrument whose sound can be heard throughout the song itself. On the other, however, Hegem can also be translated as the lift of a band, thus implying that this is a track that uses music to encourage people to free themselves and go against certain rules. As the chorus tells us, this song is a hagem. It's a call to lift a band that we as the audience are meant to join as Augusti introduces us to this new type of rebellion. According to the press release, the song pushes an idea of freedom to people who appear to be free, but are actually bound by suffocating social standards that restrict them. Much like the album as a whole, this is a concept that was inspired by Jungi's perspective, and more specifically specifically by his life as an idol, as well as his experience with social media. As he explained in the Road to D-Day documentary, for instance, one of the main inspirations behind the song is the restrictions that idols have to endure for no reason. Even if on a general level idols don't commit any crimes or do anything that controversial, people hold them at such an impossible standard that even the smallest thing can become the biggest scandal. As we see in a second, for instance, the video includes multiple scenes of Augusti smoking cigarettes, and this is one of those actions that are only considered scandalous if it's an idol doing it. If you saw any other adult smoking a cigarette down the street, you probably wouldn't even notice it, but if an adult idol is caught doing it, then people start talking and questioning his character. In a sense, Jungi decided to include those scenes as some sort of test, because if a 30-year-old smoking a cigarette becomes a controversy, then one has to wonder where we should accept this insane standard to begin with. Following these thoughts, Auguste created Hagen to start questioning this useless restrictions and lift those bands that exist for no reason. This is a song about freedom of expression. It has the goal to liberate what is forbidden, but make no mistake, the message of Egam is not that we are free to do and say whatever we want. As he explains in the song, given interpretation is free and there is a big difference between freedom and self-indulgence. If your beliefs are reflected in your thoughts and judgment and you think that your freedom is equal to the freedom of others, then this song is for you. You understand that people should be treated equal and that if you can do certain things, then others can as well. If in contrast you think that your freedom of expression is more important than others, then it becomes self-indulgence and it can become the cause of someone's death. At that point we can no longer talk about freedom of expression because your actions limits the freedom of somebody else. This is a discourse that is painfully relevant when it comes to idols, and in more ways than one this concept applies to all of us just as well. As he explained in the documentary, Hagen was also inspired by his experience with social media. In this day and age, we have access to a world of information on the palm of our hands, but oftentimes we use this tool to kind of restrict each other without even realizing it. Jung explained that there were times where he felt like his life was kind of limited by events happening on the other side of the world, but then he realized that he didn't have to walk on eggshells that much. People can live like they want, and Hagem is a song that is meant to remind us of this simple truth. In the second verse, for instance, Auguste criticizes social media and the negative impact it has on our lives. The endless influx of information that we are subjected to prohibits freedom of imagination and seeks conformity of thought. What is criticizing here is the mob mentality that people tend to acquire on social media. When somebody kind of gets engulfed by that tide, one gets blinded by the noise. The mob silences freedom of thought and feeds on unnecessary controversy, but when we are in the middle of it, we don't get it, because all that chaos confuses our judgment. We don't understand that we are the ones to blame that we are the ones restricting ourselves, so without even realizing it, we become slaves to the very system that we criticize. We become slaves to capitalism, to money, to hatred, to prejudice, to YouTube, to flexing, and none of us are immune until we actually take a step back. The moment we close our eyes, everything becomes clear. We realize that everyone was blinded by envy and jealousy, and that we were putting shackles on each other for no reason. In the song, Auguste invites us to follow the Hagem to escape this flood of information, because by doing so we can learn to differentiate between freedom and self-indulgence. Now in the video this concept is explored with a cinematic story that heavily parallels the events that took place in the Twitta. If back then Auguste played the double role of the king and the boss confronting each other, this time around Jungi plays the role of a detective and a thief fighting to the death for supremacy. Now that these two stories have something in common, it's very easy to see, because even at first glance we can notice some callbacks that reference the first 
video. For one, the jacket of the thief bears the same dragon symbol of the gang. His gang is made up of six men, like the gang of the boss, and three out of four characters played by Yungi have a scar on their eye. As he explained himself, the reason behind this scar will be revealed in Amygdala, so we'll talk more about that in that video, but in the meantime let's focus more on the story because we have quite a lot to unpack. You see, despite the shallow references that I just mentioned, Hegem and the Chuita have a lot more in common than what it seems, to the point that I would even go as far as to say that they're almost the same story but shot in different settings. In the Chuita, for instance, the boss is a man of the people who stands up to a tyrant who beheads anybody who dares to question him. As the boss challenges his power, the king takes him prisoner, but on the night of his execution, the man who was supposed to kill him frees him instead. The executioner was one of the butchers that the boss acknowledged at the very beginning, so he was his ally all along. He betrayed the king for him, and at the end he gives him the gun that the boss finally uses to shoot the tyrant. Now, keep this summary in mind when we break down what happens in Egam. At the beginning, the video opens with Augusti as the boss of a gang followed by six men. He enters a restaurant that acts as a front of illegal activities, and after stealing a pair of chopsticks, he goes upstairs to confront a rival gang. Now, as we see later on in the video, his goal is to steal these people's money, and in order to accomplish this task, he doesn't hesitate to massacre every man that comes in his way. When the thief stabs the guards with the chopsticks, the two gangs start fighting each other as Augusti steals the money. The only survivor of this massacre is this man right here, who in turn calls his boss to tell him what's going on. This is where the antagonist comes into play, which is none other than Augusti the detective. You see, even if he works for the police, he's a corrupt detective who is actually the leader of the gang the other Jungi just stole from, so as he sends a car on the scene, he sets off on his personal journey to find his nemesis. In the meantime, however, his nemesis is having the time of his life. Back in his hideout, he has a smoke, he does a little dancey dance, plays with his goldfish, and then he even goes out to get some tangerines, which I would argue are an essential detail in Jungi's lore. When he comes back, however, the detective is there waiting for him, so as Jungi the thief lays in a bathtub filled with money, Jungi the cop is pointing a gun at him ready to shoot. This, however, doesn't seem to affect him, so much so that he removes the cigarette from the cop's lips, and uses it to set on fire the money that he stole from him. This is proof that Jungi the thief never really cared about his money, he just wanted to disrespect him, and this is what sends the detective off the edge. After getting waterboarded, the thief is standing in front of the detective about to be executed. Just like in the Chuita, however, there is a final twist, because the boss takes a gun out of the barrel and shoots the detective, killing him instead. If you look closely, before approaching the body of his enemy, the thief gives the weapon to the man who was about to execute him, and this man happens to be the same guy they called the detective at the very beginning. As Jungi was leaving the premises, he saw him on the phone. They looked at each other, and he chose to keep him alive despite killing everybody else, so this implies that just like in the Chuita, all the events were part of an intricate plan to kill the corrupted leader. In both cases, the bosses allowed themselves to get captured, both tyrants thought they won, and as they were about to execute the men who challenged their power, they were betrayed by one of their own before getting shot shot by their own enemy. If in the Chuita we never got to see the outcome, however, in Egon we do, because at the end it's implied that Jungi the thief replaces the detective as the leader of his gang. Not only the police car drives him back to the restaurant from the beginning, but the waiter saves him right away like he is the new boss, thus implying that the cycle of power and greed eventually continues on. Before ending this video, I would also like to point out that Egon can also have a symbolical interpretation that fits the lyrics of the song. As we discussed before, Egon is a about Jungi rebelling against the useless restrictions that people give others for no reason other than to control them. If we apply this concept to the characters in our story, the events that take place in the video can also have a very different meaning. Let's say, for instance, the Jungi the thief is the one calling the Hagen. He wants to rebel, lift the ban, and do whatever he wants without getting judged. As he does so, however, he's also challenging the authority of the detective, who in turn kinda represents the people the Jungi is criticizing. As an antagonist, the cop is a very hypocritical critical character if you think about it. He embodies the law, but at the same time he's the most corrupted of them all, because he's also the leader of a gang. Like the people on social media who police idols but do the same stuff they want to cancel them for, the detectives want to punish the thief for things that he's guilty of as well. The thief smokes, but so does the cop. He steals, but so does the cop. He kills, but so does the cop. The only difference here is that the cop has the audacity to go after him for it, which is very similar to those people judging 
killing others for anything they do. As Jung evokes the Heikam, he draws first blood by killing with red chopsticks, which in turn is the same tool that he uses to eat right at the end. This symbolically means that the weapon that he uses to kill is the same that he uses to feed himself, which is none other than his music. In real life, Augusti doesn't need violence to prove his point. He uses his craft, and Heikam is yet another example of him successfully doing so. To see what else DJ has in store for us, we'll have to wait and see. But in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.